call the meeting to order here. It's uh, 10 o'clock on my end. And uh, what I thought we would start with is a uh, roll call of the board members uh, by Dylan. And then we'll uh, go through any uh, uh, public participants uh, and professional staff that we need to have introduced too. So Dylan, do you wanna go ahead and do that? Yeah, thank you, Alan. And uh, Martha, are you taking notes? Do you know, I, I'm recording this meeting as well. So we'll have a video backup. I am taking some notes as well. Okay, yeah. great, thank you. All right, so going down the board members chair, uh, Dean Vaughn. Yep, I'm here. Hey there, Dean. Uh, Whisper Means, Camel. <laughs> uh, present. Thank you, Whisper Hayden. Terry Tanner. Here. Awesome. Hey there, Terry. Uh, Craig Morjo. Yes, I'm here. Hey there, Craig. Uh, Susan Lake. Oop, I see you down there. Susan, does your uh, audio work? Here. Ah, hey there, Susan. <laughs> Hi. Hi, uh, yep. Uh, Alan Mickelson. Present. And Andy Larson. I know Andy, I talked to him earlier this week, was going to try to make it. I don't see him, but um, we'll see if he maybe logs in a little bit later. But it looks like Andy is not present at the moment. Okay, and let's uh, go ahead and have staff introduce themselves, uh, both from uh, the tribes and the state. All right, I'll introduce myself first and then kind of call folks out that I see. I'm Dylan Tabish with Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, Regional Information and Education Program Manager based out of Kalispell. And Jim Williams, I'll kick it over to you. Hi, everyone. Jim Williams. I'm the regional supervisor for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks up here out of Kalispell and uh, have had the pleasure of working closely with the tribal staff pretty much my entire career. <laughs> Been lots of good times. Thank you, Jim. Next up, I see Martha. Hello, everyone. I'm Martha Brescia. I'm the regional office manager, and I have participated in these meetings for 18 years now. Thank you, Martha. Uh, next up, I see Dan McClure. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dan McClure, Fish and Game Chief for the tribe, and going to dazzle you all with some numbers today. Awesome, thanks, Dan. All right, next up, I see Kenny Breidner. Hi, everybody. Kenny Bradinger with Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, fisheries biologist for the Flathead West area. Awesome. Thanks, Kenny. Um, let's see. Next up, I see Quinn. Quinn Kuka. Hi, everyone. I'm Quinn Kuka, the tribal liaison for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Um, I'm new to this position. It just started in December. Before that, I worked for the enforcement division for 12 years. And I am proud to say I am a Salish and Kootenai alumni from SKC. I got my fisheries and wildlife degree there back in 2006. Spent seven years over on that side of the mountain. So I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Quinn. Uh, Lee Anderson. Uh, Lee Anderson. I'm a game warden captain with Fish, Wildlife, and Parks based here out of Kalispell. Thank you, Lee. All right, Mike Hensler. Hi, everybody. Uh, Mike Hensler. I'm the fisheries program manager for Northwest Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Amanda. <clears throat> Oop, it looks like Amanda's connecting to audio, so her computer might be holding her off a little bit. We'll give her a sec. While, while Amanda's connecting to audio, is there anybody else out there that I missed? Any staff? Yep. I'm Mike Cool. I'm the federal law enforcement officer for the Fish and Wildlife Service properties on the reservation. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Nice to meet you. Anyone else out there? It looks like Amanda's computer is still trying to connect her. Yeah, good morning. I'm Mike Blessington. I'm a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service officer, supervisor officer out of uh, Lee Metcalf. Great. Thanks for where, joining where us, Mike. Are you, uh, where are you located, Mike? I'll be located at Lee Metcalf. Uh, oh, okay. 
office. Sorry, I, I didn't catch the Lee Metcalf. Yeah. Anyone else out there that I've missed? Well, Amanda, it looks like your computer's uh, is struggling to connect you, but I see I see she's in there. I don't know if whenever you uh, are able to connect, if you want to wave me down, I'll let you introduce yourself. But uh, I think that is everybody, uh, Alan. And do we have any members of the public out there? Uh, yeah, I'm here with CSKT Wildlife. My name is Katie Bergelow. Great. Thank you, Katie. All right, Alan, I'll hand it back to you. Okay. Thank you all for uh, those introductions. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, put the minutes out uh, for approval. Uh, minutes as uh, corrected by uh, Whisper. And so uh, uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the April 1st uh, meeting. Motion by Terry Tanner. Motion by Terry Tanner to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second by Susan Lake. Seconded by Susan Lake. Uh, <clears throat> are there any corrections that we have to uh, note at this time other than the ones that were entered by uh, Whisper earlier? If not, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed by the like sign? Minutes, uh, minute approval has been done unanimously. Thank you very much. And we also have in front of us right now a uh, draft resolution at my request, thanking the outgoing board members uh, for their service. And uh, this would, uh, this draft letter would be the one that was amended by uh, Dale. And I think Whisper, you amended it also. Uh, so uh, with, that's the uh, copy that is uh, on the floor right now uh, for approval as a draft resolution, thanking the outgoing board members. Is there any discussion on that? If not, is there a motion to approve that draft resolution? I move to approve it. Uh, Whisper moves to approve the draft resolution. Is there a second? Dean will second. And seconded by Dean. Thank you, Dean. Uh, any discussion? If not, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And uh, any opposed, like sign. Motion, you care, uh, motion to approve the draft resolution uh, carries unanimously. Thank you very much. And now uh, we'll turn this over for uh, agency enforcement reports. And first on the agenda is uh, uh, CSKT. So uh, let's go there. Dan, not sure if you're muted or if you want to. Dan, you might be muted, I think. Uh, I think he stepped away. I don't see him sitting at his desk. Might have got called out. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, we can wait and uh, come back to Dan. Uh, could we have the Fish and Wildlife Services up next then? Sure. Um, I have a PowerPoint, but I don't really know how to do PowerPoint on um, Zoom. Is that something that we could do, or should I just kind of talk you through it? So, if you uh, do, you, are you on a phone or a computer? I'm on a computer. Yeah. So, if you would like, you can share your screen. Um, mm -hmm. So, if you on the bottom, you see the green share screen. Uh -huh. If you click on that, that'll share your screen, and then you could just click through your PowerPoint that way if you'd like. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, I think I'm trying to go to full screen here. Is it? Uh, Looks there. good on my side. All right. So for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm Mike Cool. Uh, I've been working up on the reservation since 2010. And I cover the... Um, National Bison Range, Nine Pipe, National Wildlife Refuge, Pablo, 
We have eight waterfowl production areas in Lake County uh, within the reservation and about 30 conservation easements. I'm also re responsible for recovering Lee Metcalf in the Bitterroot, so off the reservation. So just some, some things that uh, uh, I dealt with this year. Um, we had 81 incidents and out of those incidents, we had 121 offenses. So just to explain that, you know, we, we call an incident just, um, you know, if I ran into somebody trespassing and then let's say, you know, they also had a dog off leash or something. So that would be two offenses. It'd be one incident, but, you know, they had two things that, that were wrong. Um, just had 15 citations within the reservation and about 47 assists. And that could have been assisting uh, the state game wardens. It could have been assisting the tribal game wardens, but also the sheriff's office or the tribal police department. Um, out of those citations, uh, 11 of them were for trespassing, just one for off-roading. That's up at uh, Pablo. Just decided to go mudding out in the uh, wetland. Um, COVID times kind of threw a wrench. I'm sure everyone's gonna talk about that, but uh, our bathrooms were destroyed. I won't share any of the other pictures that we have. It was a pretty rough time, I think, for all public lands, I think for state, tribal, and um, our federal public lands. Uh, I, I have to ask, is somebody yeah. trying to sleep in the bathroom or something? I think they the threw toilet? just their couch cushions out that um, had been soiled by their cat. Uh, they just oh used us as a, as a dumping oh. ground. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quite unpleasant. Uh, we were able to shut the, the bison range down with uh, a lot of help, actually, from the tribe. Tribal council was supportive of us um, closing the bison range, and that helped us get it through uh, our kind of administration. So, yeah, we had a lot of, a lot of issues, including uh, we had a, a theft, a, a somewhat large theft um, from the bison range. They broke into a shop and stole quite a few items. We ended up you know, finding a suspect and that's um, in the process of being prosecuted right now. Also dealt with a lot of drugs. Uh, three of the citations were for drugs. Anytime we come across meth on the, the federal side or any kind of dangerous drugs, um, we usually turn that over to the state or the county for felony prosecution. But just a lot bigger of an issue this year than what I've dealt with in the past. Um, got to hang out with uh, Morgan quite a bit, uh, helped him out on Wild Horse Island, just picking up sheep skulls and, and doing foot patrols, uh, helped him out on the river doing water safety checks, and then we did a waterfowl compliance check on the Flathead River, and uh, he helped me out with some antler work on the bison range. I did work with the tribe also, I just... Um, yeah, I just usually take pictures of like the boat times because I like boats, but, uh, you know, I helped them out with um, what I can remember a uh, um, shooting from the road case. And then we also had a larger investigation that can't really share any fun pictures from because it's in the process of a prosecution. So do you work off refuge again, just more boat pictures uh, that's over at Fort Peck out by Glasgow. Um, the fun times about working on the east side is got hammered with some hail while we were sitting in the boat, uh, but I'd much rather work out on the reservation. It's uh, a place I really love and enjoy, and I really appreciate um, the camaraderie we have between the state wardens and me and the tribal wardens. I think we all work really well together. And just a couple of things to, to highlight for the future. I really appreciate where we're at with the regulations right now. Uh, I think it's been a lot of work and a lot of good work. And what I appreciate the most is we have a consistency between what's in the um, tribal regulations for members and non-members um, for uh, fishing uh, and the closures that we have on specifically Pablo and Nine Pipe. So it's always nice for me to be able to say, hey, look, this closure is in our uh, brochure. It's also in the tribal regulations. Um, just gives the public a lot of opportunities to know what the rules are instead of federal rules being hidden in one place and state rules being hidden in another. So I, I think that's really, I really appreciate that a lot. Um, always looking to restart back up our, our coordination meeting in the fall. I think it's kind of um, 
slip by the wayside because we've all gotten so busy with other stuff. And I always like doing some training together. We just did some training recently um, with one of the tribal wardens. And then if you guys don't know, the bison range has been officially transferred to the tribe uh, through legislation. So just working through that process and want to be an asset to them in any way that I can over the next year or two. And does anybody have any questions? Hearing none, I will stop sharing my screen. Okay, thanks a lot, Mike. Really appreciate that. <clears throat> and uh, Martha. Um, may I just make a request that anyone, um, any of the law enforcement um, folks sharing a presentation or anything that you send, send it to me or your notes so that I can have attachments for, the, for these minutes. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Martha. Is, uh, is Dan back? Dan McClure? I am. Okay, Dan, let's, uh, uh, can we go back to uh, the tribes uh, enforcement reports then? Absolutely. First of all, I apologize. I ran over, try to help Amanda with her computer issue, but uh, I was no help there. So um, <laughs> first of all, good morning again. Thanks uh, for, you know, putting this together. Uh, <laughs> kind of a goofy time of year for us all. I'm sure this uh, whole COVID stuff and then uh, the whole bison transfer, we are all super busy, but uh, just wanted to share. I did send, I didn't know Martha, I'd have sent it to you. Uh, I sent, I did send uh, our little report sheet that I usually share with every year to Dylan, uh, emailed it to him just a few minutes ago. So he could send that to you guys if you would, please. Um, it's just what I'm kind of reading off of, but uh, so it's always a good year. It's, we, I have to say, working with the state, working with Mike, um, it's, we have a really good working relationship. Uh, we could always seem to count on each other for backup or, or looking into things um, if one of us aren't able to be there. Um, I enjoy having those uh, conversations with Morgan and, and Mike when we do get together. Um, and I, I never ever have an issue. So it's always fun to work with them. Um, I don't work with them as much as I used to, being as I'm in the office now, but uh, every chance I get, I get out there too. But just some numbers to share. Um, in 2020, uh, we had 102 citations, and that's not the total number of citations. There's some in this report that didn't make it in just due to the fact of what they were. Um, but for the majority, we've issued 53 citations for trespass on the tribal lands. Um, people who come to visit and recreate that did not purchase a conservation permit to utilize the properties. A lot of, uh, I wouldn't say just out-of-staters, but a lot of out-of-staters and uh, people from out of area off reservation. Um, we saw a huge influx of visitors so we have a lot of opportunity to talk and educate the public that's new to Montana as well um, to advise them where they are on the map. And usually it um, just means that they go into town and buy the permits they need to be there. So we had 21 citations issued for off-roading um, individuals that get their you know, newly purchased side-by-sides or four-wheelers and decide that they're gonna go off the road, off the beaten path to go try out their new four wheel drives. Um, we had 21 of those citations, um, various locations throughout the tribe on, on the reservation, but uh, a lot of them down there at um, Buffalo Bridge where we always have problems with that activity. We had seven hunting on the reservations with non-members. That's, that's uh, tribal members hunting with non-members um, within the boundaries of the reservation. We had, uh, actually that's a lot more than we usually get, um, but we had seven of those last year. 
so my guys, they all take turns um, sitting on the AIS station down in Ravalli um, to stop non-compliant passerbys. And we had 57 last year fail to stop AIS citations. Um, I don't know how many warnings we gave, but usually a warning is only given if it's like a kayak or, or a canoe or something, but uh, they still get stopped. All vehicles that are stopped are returned to the AIS station for inspection. Um, and then they receive their citation at that time too. Um, we had 148 trapping days. Uh, we trap all over the reservation for bear issues. Um, as I said in the past, what we do now is we don't just go out with traps and trap anybody's bear that they want to. Um, we make sure that they have an opportunity to clean up the problem they created by uh, taking away any attractants. So then our trapping numbers have actually went down in the last couple of years, which I am all for because that gives our us guys opportunity to get back out and patrol where they should be. Um, just some quick. Can I, can I jump in here just for a second? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I, I am really glad to see you've got uh, a game warden at the uh, check station in Ravalli because three or four years ago, I remember following somebody up Ravalli Hill who blew right by that station with a, with a boat and and I kept thinking, man, I wish there was somebody there. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. We try to be there every day. Um, like I said, we do assign someone there every day. And every so often, um, which is a super great help, is uh, state wardens come down and do some time down there as well. They relieve us of having to be there. So we appreciate when, when the state wardens come down and help us with that issue. Um, Continuing on with the numbers we had, just the wardens alone had just shy of 6,000 field contacts. That's permits checked, um, recreating on the properties. They investigated 521 uh, complaints and then issued a total of 160 citations. Um, Brandon, my sergeant, usually does a little uh, presentation as Mike did with the PowerPoint, but he's unable to be here because we're a little shorthanded today. But he just handed me a piece of paper this morning. He we wanted to talk about or express his gratitude um, working with Morgan Post um, out here on uh, doing boat patrols on the lower Flathead River um, on the lake during uh, what we call the Yellow Perch Run. Um, they had made, let's see, it looks like two patrols this last year. There was three tribal court citations issued and 33 field contacts made, which is always surprising to the outdoorsmen because they're not used to seeing us out there as much as we are nowadays. Um, I had one warden, uh, Peyton Alexander, who last year, for fun, he likes to hike to the top of uh, East St. Mary's Peak. Um, he issued a citation up there last summer uh, to the surprise of the receive, recipient of that citation. They were now determined to buy their permits from now on. <laughs> so that's always a good thing. Um, just looking at Brandon's notes here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, I guess, that I've got. Um, as Mike had mentioned, we are in a transition period with the bison range. Um, our objective with this office is to move our office into the bison range by November, um, where all our wardens will be doing all our work from that location. Um, it's not a bad location for us because we can respond to our hot areas more um, and quicker maybe see that river a little more um and yeah it's just it's good the relationships between the agencies is amazing and and we'll continue to do the work we do 
And that's all I have. Questions? Okay, thanks a lot, Dan. Appreciate that. Thank you. Anybody have any more questions or any questions for Dan at all before we move on? If not, let's move on to uh, Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. <clears throat> uh, yeah, can you guys all hear me? Yep. Okay, this is uh, Lee Anderson. I'm the warden captain here based in Kalispell. I'll uh, give a brief initial uh, uh, introduction and kind of some things that are going on. And then Morgan uh, Post, who's the game warden down there that uh, Dan and, and uh, Mike have spoken of already. He'll, if his audio connects, it looks like it's doing some strange things. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that's gonna work. And uh, judging by the look on his face, he's getting frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry, anyway, <laughs> there we go. Oh, we got him. Um, so anyway, just a real brief uh, introduction. Uh, you know, for me, I've been working with the tribe uh, as captain for 16 years now and uh, got as good a relationship as we've ever had with uh, CSKT. Worked real close with Mike Cool uh, from the get go. And uh, so what I can tell you, for FWP, just some nuances this year, uh, we had a number of vacancies and Morgan, he really stepped up and uh, helped us out on those vacancies. Uh, one of them being down out of Thompson Falls where a warden transferred to uh, the Helena area. And so Morgan was kind of pulling double duty and it was kind of a bummer of a year to have that happen when we all saw this sea of humanity uh, migrating to the Flathead Valley. And I know the, the reservation was, uh, feeling the same uh, influx, but he did a great job of still trying to maintain his contacts, et cetera, uh, on Flathead Lake uh, and on the reservation, as well as covering all the way to the uh, Idaho border out of Thompson Falls. And so that was one little nuance that we had, but uh, I won't steal much of Morgan's uh, thunder here. I know he's kind of got a got stuck at home here with the family. So you might even hear some of our young assistance may be ready to help in the background, but he can give a brief uh, summary of what we uh, had going on. We did have some good cases that he worked uh, individually as well as with the tribe. And uh, I'll just, uh, I'll leave it there and give it to the guys who really, uh, really get it done. Go ahead, yeah. Morgan. Thanks, Lee. Um, yeah, sorry, I have the kids and stuff. We had another meeting yeah. this week and um, just, just doing the juggling the daycare thing the best we can. But anyway, um, like Dan and, and Mike said, it's it's uh, great working on, on the reservation and um, work, working with uh, the tribe and, and, and the, the feds. Um, it, everything, uh, everything's, a, you know, it's, it's awesome being able to work jointly with everyone. And um, this year it, it uh, wasn't uh, quite our normal year, like everyone's kind of said, um, it's, it was kind of with our vacancies. I, I was working on the West End of Sanders, so I was kind of jokingly telling them that I'm, I've been felt like I've been more in Idaho than than in my uh, in my district. Um, but anyway, um, just some of the uh, I guess the highlights, um, which probably will be um, rehashed to some extent, <laughs> what everyone else has already talked about. But um, yeah, we uh, I know I got out on the lake for the perch bite with Howard. Um, got a couple days on the river with, with Brandon patrolling um, for anglers. And uh, we also uh, dealt with a, a ram case uh, with a, a deadhead pickup case um, that, that was successfully prosecuted through travel court. Um, and then uh, we just recently had a, there was a big illegal off-roading event that, um, some young people had uh, planned on, on some tribal land and we uh, all got together and, and uh, dissuaded that from happening. And then later in the evening, we happened upon a, a pretty big party on, on, in, on another section of tribal land and uh, shut that down. There's a lot of MIPs and, and that kind of thing going on there. So, and um, out with Mike, yeah, that we did our raft patrol and, uh kind of a funny uh deal on that we 
successfully made a stop on a on a jet boat um, coming up the river almost to uh, Sloan's Bridge. They made it quite a ways up from, I think they put in at Cacousant. Um, so there's quite a few recreators in that area and they were all pretty, pretty happy to see um, us out there and, and turn them around and, and, and uh, get them out of that closure area um, where we, you know, you can only have a 15 horse motor or smaller. So, um, and then another case that we just recently had that uh, was su successfully uh, charged and uh, prosecuted was a closed season bobcat case that Garrett um, I, I uh, worked jointly with Garrett and let him take the, the lead on. Um, and uh, we we went to this individual's, uh, they had a couple of their sets off, off uh, the reservation and we just checked that out and everything. They, you know, they use the way people set up their cubby sets and stuff. A lot of times it's one person has a pretty specific technique and um, sure enough, they, it, it was uh, pretty easy to match everything up and they ended up um, being, being pretty straightforward with us and um, and it, it all resulted in a successful conviction. So that was a, that was a good case. Um, and uh, yeah, with the COVID stuff, I helped, helped uh, assist with the closure um, and advised folks that weren't uh, reservation residents and stuff of, of the rules uh, when, when I could patrol through some of the, the tribal sites. Um, on the AIS end of things, had a few um, citations and we also have uh, tribal staff over in Thompson Falls working that check station. And we did have a individual that was harassing the staff and uh, not really letting them get their job done. So we dealt with that that situation um, and uh, got things. So they were working good down there um, in that regard. A um, few, few days, yeah, quite a few days out on Wild Horse. Um, of course we had our fire on Bird. So I spent quite a bit of time out there trying to enforce the closure and make sure folks weren't uh, going out there due to, due to the safety hazard on that end. Um, but yeah, they quite, spent quite a bit of time working the west end of the Sanders County to uh, um, cover the vacancies that that we had, um, which is pretty pretty busy area. So that took up most of my time during the the hunting season. Had a few good elk cases. Um, someone shot a cow and and a bull, and then uh, pulled pulled both those critters off the hill uh, illegally with a side by side, uh, had an individual shoot a, a cow without any kind of cow tag or anything. And then um, had someone poach a, a bull on some private um, property and, and a few, few other uh, cases. Um, and uh, let's see what else we, so that, that's kind of the, kind of the, I guess the highlights. Um, if you guys have any, any questions on, on anything I mentioned or anything I didn't mention. <laughs> Any questions for Morgan? If not, thanks a lot, uh, both Morgan and Lee for, for that presentation. Alan, I got, I've got one, one thing I was going to mention um, and Morgan didn't touch on, but you know, we did have a, a case come up, uh, actually, it would have been even last year where a, a person had uh, shot a deer on the on the reservation, a non-member, and then it worked its way through court. Uh, it was basically uh, a test case to see if a person could uh, shoot uh, a big game animal on the Flathead Reservation on private property, and it did end up working its way through the court, and the the individual actually did, uh, was found not guilty on that case. Um, but what happened in the end was uh, when the judge made his ruling, it went into district court and the judge did rule that there wasn't uh, good enough, uh, basically good enough posting in our hunting regulations in 2019 that would show that the reservation was closed to non-member hunting on, on the reservation. Um, but that was the only real 
uh, argument that the, the judge ruled on. So it didn't go into any other issues of constitutionality of, or things like that. And so that, uh, that has since been cleaned up in our regulations so that it's very clear that any non-member that it's, they can't hunt on the Flathead Res uh, Indian Reservation. And so we fixed the regulations, although we did end up actually losing that case. Okay, thanks, Lee. Any other uh, comments? Alan? Yeah. Is that the one that Joe Reed cited in his uh, legislation this year at the Capitol? Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Um, question for Chairman Mickelson, members of the board. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just, uh, if, if I may, uh, just to follow up on Captain Anderson's comment, uh, full disclosure, the department was uh, in opposition to the bill that was proposed uh, as a result of that case, the governor's office and the department actually testified against that bill and it, and it was defeated. So um, yeah, that was quite a, quite a process. Uh, and of course, you know, the state tribal agreement has been so successful for so many years on the ground and relationships, you know, there was a lot at stake. And frankly, when this initially uh, when the agreement was created, there was a potential to go to all sorts of uh, varied levels of legal review all the way to the Supreme Court with endless years of legal uh, wrangling. And instead, the state and the tribes decided to create this agreement and it's worked real well. So uh, just uh, full disclosure, the department and, and the governor's office did a, we, we were in agreement to oppose this bill uh, that was uh, related to that case. So thanks, Jim. Appreciate that. Anybody else? I didn't want to put her on the spot, but Whisper, you're on my screen nodding your head, so. <laughs> Terry Tanner was just noting that he's been on this board since it started. He's an original. Okay. Great. That's actually really good to know because that's a tremendous amount of institutional knowledge. So thanks for that. Okay, uh, anybody else? Uh, are there any other things that we need to talk about on agency enforcement reports? We are, uh, I think, going through the agenda with a fair amount of dispatch. And uh, on my agenda now, we have uh, new business. Uh, is there uh, anything that anybody wants to bring up uh, at this time for new business? I have a question, I guess, for staff, uh, and, and, and actually maybe even Terry, knowing the knowledge that he has, uh, uh, historical knowledge. Do we have a... Uh, meeting where we talk about uh, uh, fishing uh, regulations. We, we talked about the uh, uh, the uh, bird hunting uh, on uh, April 1st, but I was just wondering if there was a, another meeting that we talked about, and I haven't looked through my, apologize for not looking through my meeting schedule. Is there a, that we talk about fishing? The reason I asked, because I saw Les Everts uh, on the, uh, uh, list of attendees, and I haven't talked to Les for several years now. Look forward to it. Chairman Mickelson, if I may jump in. Yes, uh, there, we, we have joint uh, topics of fisheries and wildlife and enforcement and recreation. Everything's covered throughout the year. And Dylan, I think, uh, has the schedule since it's the state's turn. Uh, Dylan, is that the next meeting? Is that a fisheries based? I don't, not to put you on the spot, Dylan, but I, but yes, we do. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a good topic, um, I guess, as we're kind of, we have uh, new board members and we're kind of kicking off a new season of meetings and what the schedule has right now um, online is May 26th would be our next meeting. And the, the, what we have listed down for the agenda, that one is tribal accomplishments, projects, pheasant and partridge season regulations and uh, recommend approval. Uh, or so I guess tribal accomplishments and projects, pheasant and partridge season regulations, um, 
So that's what's on the May 26th agenda. And I, I don't know how, um, you know, if we want to change those, I think those are just kind of year by year, right? How we've historically done that. And then in July is the state accomplishments and projects review. And then in October is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service accomplishments projects. I think those are just some of the um, agenda items, but then we can add obviously to the agenda. Is that, am I kind of remembering that correctly? And I see Les is on and I usually Les presents at that meeting uh, and, and, uh, and Dale whisper now and um, on updates. Correct, Les? Yeah, I, I think the fish and regs usually get discussed at the July. July. Okay. And I'm joining today in part. Um, well, first of all, hello, everybody. I'm Les, the fisheries program manager, but uh, I'm actually participating here for the discussion on uh, the field trip. And that may be appropriate in this new business category. I don't know when you're going to get to that, but it, we can uh, beat around some ideas. I guess that's the tribe's obligation this year. And and uh, when we get to that discussion, I can I can happy to chime in on some ideas there. Well, let's chime in on that right now, then, Les, because uh, I do have the schedule. I did pull the schedule up in front of me here, and that's looks like it's tentatively scheduled in June. Doesn't have a firm date or anything like that. Uh, it's uh, just field trips sponsored by the tribes with location to be determined. So uh, why don't you go ahead and take off with it? Yeah, um, well, it's, I guess partly we need to pick a date that works for everybody sometime in June is generally when it takes place. And this is the, uh, the tribes sponsor this one this year. So from fisheries perspective, there's a number of things we could do with the new board members and knowing what I know about the new board members, uh, there's gotta be some interest in what's going on under the compact that might affect fisheries. Um, things like the, um, we could do a tour of irrigation facilities they are slated to get upgraded and replaced um, is one example, the K Canal this summer may be the last time you'll see it as it exists because I think it'll, uh, the construction will start on that this coming fall. There's other uh, interesting fisheries related structures in the Jocko, the North Fork um, might have a good design on that by then, the North, the, the Tabor diversion at the North Fork. Um, S14, I think, is being done sometime soon. I'm not tracking that. I meant to visit with Craig Barfoot before I got on here to get the, a little bit more of the specifics here on the, on those timelines. He's following that for us. But there's a lot to do there, particularly in the Jocko. So the compact, of course, passed. I think everybody knows that. And with that came a lot of money for infrastructure improve, improvement, as well as restoration. There's those three things I mentioned. There's also the lower uh, J Canal that's being looked at in the Jocko. So there's a field trip at, to look at what's going on or what's slated to be happening in, in the Jocko uh, under the compact. That could be even broader. But another fun one that uh, many of the board members have been to, but I don't think the newer board members have been there yet. Um, it's a fun place for an easy lunch. Uh, it's out of Blue Bay where our fish processing facility is. And um, if it's a nice day, we can get out on the boat and look at how all that works, uh, how we do our netting and then how we do our processing and marketing of that fish. Um, so there's just a couple ideas, fisheries related. And uh, you know, I don't want to hog the whole show here. There might be some wildlife projects that are worth showing. I mean, with the new members, it, the sky's the limit. There's lots of things we can we can go do. Um, maybe we can have a. I might suggest that we do uh, either restoration or a irrigation infrastructure idea, but with a backup at Blue Bay because at Blue Bay we can, if it's a bad weather day, we can. Um, a little easier logistics. We can all go to one spot and be out of the weather. Um, so maybe we can have a couple ideas and just just accommodate that. Now, if we go to Blue Bay, um, we need to schedule that on a Tuesday, a Wednesday, or a Thursday. 
Um, that's the only restriction there. Otherwise, you would see um, you wouldn't see the action, so to speak. <laughs> so, I'll throw it out there for other ideas. Unless uh, on the Blue Bay stuff, uh, Mac days will be over. Are they just processing uh, netted fish or something like that? Correct. Yep. Mac days will be over. That's unfortunate. Um, that'd be a fun trip too. But yeah, Mac, Mac day, spring will be over and fall will not have started, but we'll, we will continue to uh, do our netting effort through June. Mr. Chairman, uh, spoke, spoken like a uh, true fisheries biologist, I'd still like to hear the uh, wildlife biologists uh, weigh in also on this before we make any decisions. Mr. Chairman, yeah, go uh, ahead, Whisper. Terry had also mentioned maybe if we do go to Blue Bay and we don't get a chance to run the rest of the reservation for the um, irrigation, that maybe there could still be a presentation that could occur up at Blue Bay about some of that information? Slideshow. Like a slideshow or something. You know, uh, let me throw one other idea out here. Uh, I'm somewhat loath to do it given my schedule too, but uh, I'm almost wondering if two field trips a year might not be better, one for fisheries and one for wildlife. I, I would really kind of halfway like to see the uh, uh, bison range uh, and maybe we can put that off until next year after everybody's got their feet on the ground and, and uh, uh, the transition is 100% complete. And, and uh, but I mean, that's just something I'm throwing out. I think, uh, you know, the uh, Jocko would take up pretty much a full day. Uh, but I'm wondering if we wouldn't be better off. At, I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm wondering if we wouldn't be better off at Blue Bay this year and Jocko next year after some of that work is already done there at Jocko that we can take a look at because we're just starting into that now. But I'll throw that out for more discussion. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a good idea. Um, the Jocko is a big trip and, you know, even if we get some work accomplished, for example, the K Canal, we'll have the uh, Preconditioned photographs to compare to what goes in there, but that's that's going to be a very interesting and fairly sophisticated fish handling facility. So it might actually be better to look at it after it's completed. And my understanding right now is construction is slated for this this fall after irrigation season. So uh, if we go there next year, we'll we'll actually be able to see what uh, the end result is there and and what what that looks like, and then still if we want to get around to some of the other structures that are slated to be done, we'll, we'll, we'll do that as well. So can we tentatively uh, plan on June uh, at Blue Bay? Anybody have any objections to that? Well, hearing none, let's go ahead and tentatively plan on that then, Les. Okay. Yes, pick a day. We can accommodate I'll leave, to, I'll leave that up to staff to do that. <laughs> Les, if you like, I could work with you and we could send out a doodle poll for, for a few dates to everybody. Sure. That works. I do like the idea of having a little bit of a slideshow on the irrigation project while they're up there, though, because that gives us an opportunity to to give to let the public know too what's what's happening. And I like the two field trip idea too, Alan. There's a lot going on. 
And there's going to be a lot going on for a long time. Uh, I have one thing that I talked to Dylan about uh, that I want to just throw out uh, as a possibility for uh, new business at some point. And let me uh, preface it by saying that I used to be a pretty avid bird hunter. I haven't hunted birds now for years. I don't have uh, a dog anymore. And, and that uh, made a lot of difference for me. But uh, I was wondering about the possibility, uh, and, and I'm not advocating for anything, but I'm just wondering about the possibility of, of having some uh, planted pheasants uh, or some pheasants planted on uh, some of that uh, state wildlife land around uh, Pablo, or not Pablo, but around just around uh, the Nine Pipe uh, complex. I shouldn't have said Pablo. Uh, I know there, there's a lot of bird hunters there. Uh, and uh, I just thought it might create an opportunity for uh, a little bit more of a hunting opportunity for those folks. And uh, I, I know that there was a, I, I been, was exposed last fall to uh, the, the uh, notice that there was a fairly large in fact, one of the largest game bird farms in the West in Conrad, and that the state was supposedly going to be thinking about contracting with them to do bird planting in other areas of the state. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not advocating it. I'm just wondering about the possibility of increased hunter opportunities uh, in this area, uh, particularly around that nine pipe complex. And uh, uh, I would defer to uh, professional staff, uh, both from the tribes and the state, uh, you know, to uh, either uh, critique or pursue the idea. I don't have any uh, idea of what you know, an appropriate number would be if, or if it would even be appropriate. So I was just halfway wondering if uh, uh, we could have a discussion on that at least uh, uh, at some uh, future meeting here. Uh, Chairman Mickelson and, and Whisper, uh, if I take a first poke at that, uh, kind of two issues. Uh, in the past, Dale Becker, the uh, Tribal Wildlife Program Manager, and when I was a wildlife manager years ago, it was pretty much a habitat-driven approach. And as the farming has shrunk in the Mission Valley, so as the pheasant population, as, and as people converted um, kind of uh, brushy, uh, non um, manicured habitats to really horse pastures in front of a five acre place, a subdivision, the pheasant population really declined over the years. But jointly working with the service and the tribes in the state, we've added a lot of land to Nine Pipe over the years, um, some really good land and good habitat. And I know John Grant and Art Sukla and others, you know, they spend a lot of time managing that. So we've always taken a habitat approach versus letting birds go kind of put and take. Um, however, we have done it in the past, and uh, every few legislative sessions, a bill will come out and direct us to do something. The last, and there's one cooking right now, actually, in the session. Uh, in the past, when we've let the birds go, depending upon how old they are and how they were raised and the condition, you can just essentially feed all the native raptors in about two days with a release. Uh, mm -hmm. short of putting them out right in front of kids with shotguns and a bird club uh, or whatnot. But that's not 100% true, but that, that's our experience in the past. And there is a bill right now that may direct us to re release birds on wildlife management areas. So that may be, your idea may come to fruition via legislation this session again, in which case now Whisper and Neil Anderson, our wildlife manager and John, we'd have to get together and figure out how to do it and where. Um, We've done it north of the lake up here, and it tends to work well if you release the birds the morning of a youth hunt, and the kids are with a mentor, and the birds are there. But after about a day, the raptors get them, they disperse, and you know the pretty naive birds race in captivity. So you gotta, we found that you have to take advantage of it right away if you're going to do that, and there are birds available. But uh, whisper, I guess if you want to add anything to that, that's just a little bit of history. I don't have all the history on it right this minute, but I think that's what Dale has suggested in the past is that they are a little naive, that they do 
not last a whole long time. And so I guess we'd have to talk about that and see what the opportunities were. I think that his other concern was bird health and that if they brought in a disease or a parasite or something that infected the pheasants that are already established here or any other birds. So I guess just he was mostly concerned about the certification of the stock that was would be brought in here. Okay. Good topic though, Chairman. Would that be- uh, You know, one of the issues that I would also be interested in, it would be a, it would be budgetary, you know, cause I, I, I have to assume that uh, these birds are not cheap uh, either. And so, uh, you know, I, I guess I, I've got as many questions as I, uh, well, I got a lot of questions about the whole thing too. And nobody has, I wanna be clear, nobody has approached me on this. Uh, this was just my thought about creating uh, hunter opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I am totally prepared to be shot down uh, without any problem at all. Uh, uh, kind of a bad pun when we're talking about birds, but anyway, go ahead, Dylan. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I think, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, John Grant, uh, who works at Nine Pipe, gives a, um, a breakdown of kind of the latest status of Nine Pipe and also the bird populations down there. Is that the July meeting when he would be given his report? And that would be probably a good time for this to dive into this one. Yep. And that, just an idea too, uh, Whisper, I could have Neil uh, reach out to you and maybe we can do a little white paper on the history and and what we've done to date for the board, and then then the board can do, you know wrestle where you want to go in the future. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair, if you'd like, when we're kind of crafting uh, future agendas, I could we could look at that July twenty eighth meeting if you'd like, because I believe that's when John normally gives his nine pipe um, summary for the year. Anyhow, that would be great. And I I don't want to add a lot to you guys' plates, but you know if uh, anybody could be prepared to talk about. Uh, uh, a potential budget, potential numbers, and a potential schedule, uh, and uh, you know, disease concerns, how that's addressed, um, and 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 things like that. I mean, I I just uh, uh, like I said, more information than than not. Uh, Chairman Mickelson, uh, members of the board, I, I just add to that one of the most rewarding parts. I'm kind of end of career of my of my entire time here was working together with the tribes and the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Pheasants Forever and Ducks Unlimited. And we've really, as a group, you look at the tribal mitigation lands added, the state lands added, the federal easements, uh, the Dean's program. Um, as a collective group, we've probably protected, conserved more open space and bird habitat for not only bird hunting, but birders now uh, in that nine pipe area than probably anywhere else in the state, maybe the Rocky Mountain Front and their lands program and the Blackfoot, but really for birds, it's pretty impressive what we've done as a group via this agreement. And, and uh, it's just, it's heartwarming. And that, that open space, can you imagine today after COVID and this crush of humanity that came up here, like uh, uh, Dan McClure talked about and Lee, uh, we, we would have lost it all. So boy, thank gosh, over the years we've done that. And we do have that open slate to experiment with things like you, you're bringing up, Chairman. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate that, and and all the work that the tribes and the state have done on on habitat, definitely here. Uh, are there any other you know, items that we could put up under new business here? We had one. Uh, Terry ahead, brought up that he was interested in um, maybe some more outreach, since we do have an influx of new people moving here. Do we have a plan on? how to outreach to new residents on regulations on the reservation and just kind of what we do and off the reservation. And off the reservation. So that this sort of a media blitz or what's the plan to meet up or to reach new people. You know, I was thinking about that uh, actually the other day too. So I'm glad you brought that up. And uh, uh, does this board, uh, how, how does all this work budgetarily for what you're talking about? Because I think it's uh, I, I think it's needed, really needed for all of the influx of uh, new people that we've got uh, all the way across Western Montana. And the reservation is obviously, frankly, uh, sometimes I think, unfortunately, a ripe target. 
uh, for everybody. Uh, so uh, I, I'd be interested to know what our possibilities are or what, what we can do. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if you'd like, you know, Steph Gillen and I have met and talked about this quite a bit, especially after last summer. And, and so I could chat with Steph and we could maybe put a little a presentation together on our kind of different outreach plans. Uh, you know, we're uh, doing trying to do exactly what you said and, and, uh, and, you know, the campaign up here that we're it's that recreate responsibly campaign that is, um, is kind of like a, a leave no trace 2.0, I guess, for lack of a better term. And so, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to chat with Steph and then see when we could maybe present to this board uh, jointly in the future. You know, I, I'm i looking at the schedule and I hate to put pressure on people, but our next meeting is May 26th and it's kind of largely a, uh, it's like it's kind of a bird meeting and uh, upland game meeting. Uh, and then and a list of tribal accomplishments. Is there any way, we've, we've moved through this agenda with a fair amount of dispatch. Is there any way that we could be prepared to talk about uh, public outreach on May 26th? Because I, I think when we start talking about public outreach, that time is of the essence. Uh, you know, we're gonna be looking at a summer and I think a summer of sort of pent up demand also. Uh, you know, the river was closed last summer to non-residents and uh, of the reservation. And I, I think that, uh, you know, the more we can talk about this, the more news, I guess, or public notice that we can get out, the better off we are. And so I would, was wondering if we could add that maybe to the May 26th agenda. Yeah, Mr. Chair, that, that sounds great. I'll let me chat with Steph Gillen and, um, and with CSKT and, and, uh, see if she's available that day, but yeah, we can be uh, prepared to, to present something um, at that meeting. I, I think you're right, the timing is right. I just heard yesterday on working with Glacier Park and the Forest Service up here, they're similarly kind of panicking a little bit about the flood of people. Uh, the stat that I heard was that uh, we have an additional 70,000 flight uh, people coming via flights already scheduled to Kalispell this summer. So 70,000 more. <laughs> tickets flying into Kalispell than, than last year. And we remember how busy last year was, even in the midst of COVID. So when you add another 70,000, it's it certainly is heartburn inducing. So I will confirm with Steph and get back to the board on that. Okay, Whisper, how does that sound to you? That sounds pretty good from this side. Okay, thanks. And uh, not to put too fine of a point on it, but I think that uh, this is a more important uh, uh, item on the agenda than uh, planting birds. <laughs> okay. So if we have to prioritize, let's do that. And, and just to double check, Mr. Chair, fishing regulations review, would you like that to stay maybe at, potentially at that July 28th meeting? Yeah, I don't want to change anything on uh, on that. Yeah, I'm I'm totally fine with that. Okay. Okay. Is there uh, any other business that needs to come before the board at this time? I have one more item before we adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Whisper. Are, do we have any other business that needs voting on or anything at this time? Not to the best of my knowledge. Okay. Well, then I have to regretfully uh, resign from the board because of my upcoming um, transition to technical staff. So I will be submitting my letter of resignation to the tribal um, government uh, after our meeting today. I didn't wanna step off in case there was anything we needed to vote on, but I am so thankful for my time here and getting to know everybody. This has been huge for me professionally and personally, and I'm so thankful. And um, I hate to leave the new board members, but I will be here as technical staff. 
So thank you. And thank you so much, Whisper. Thank, thank you. you. And it sounds like we might have to have another resolution at the next meeting. <laughs> Those letters. <laughs> thank you so very we'll much. For advertisement for a new um, tribal representative. Okay. Thank you, Whisper. Anything else uh, under business here? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. This is Terry Tanner. I'll make the motion to adjourn. I want everybody to stay safe out there and keep up the good work. And I'll see you at Blue Bay. Thanks a lot, Terry, for that. And uh, uh, I don't think, uh, I'm not sure that a motion to adjourn needs a second. Uh, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 And I think the motion carried and we will uh, see you all again on uh, May 26th, uh, according to the schedule that we have. So uh, thank you very much and really want to extend my appreciation to the staff of both the state and the tribes for uh, uh, their professionalism, for their dedication and uh, for the hard work that they put into this. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Stay safe.